So stop building React backends in Java, Python, and Go. So what's the logic behind this? Well, it starts like this with people gathered around a whiteboard and coming up with an architecture. So you can see, I'm not sure what product uh, these guys were trying to build, but you can see database. They're thinking about the business layer, but they're thinking of everything from a very sort of back-end oriented point of view. So I would say the people that created this architecture understand the back-end well, and they know the complexities of it. But if you look at the UI layer, they've kind of got browser, HTML. It's like there's hardly anything needed there at all. So what will happen is someone will say something like, okay, what are we going to do for the user interface? And they'll come up with just re use React. And it, it's a pretty solid um, and a good answer. So for me, the reason why React is so popular is because they fixed two fundamental problems. One was the JSX syntax, which means that you can compose user interfaces using shared components, which uh, at the time people were using template libraries and they don't work so well for this. And also it gave people the ability to make websites more dynamic. So you could add more interactivity in, into the website okay, or the web application. So what problems does this cause if you've kind of got your backend architecture and here they're using Java and they're going to use React for the front end? Well, first of all, you get duplication. So you've now got two different ways to do dependency management. You're going to have to take account for all of this in your CI CD pipeline. You've got two programming languages that you need to think about. So the architecture becomes more complicated than the original design was for. Incorrect sizing. So when you looked at the original architecture diagram, it looked like a huge piece of work for, for people in the back end and not so much work in the front end. And if you size it like that, you might, for example, have four back end developers and one developer to do the user interface. But my experience is that, that it doesn't quite work like that. So if you look at a, a project that, that's set up this way, in this example, I'm looking at Sentry, you can see actually the back end, which was written in Python, is around about 60% of the code, but the front end in TypeScript has taken up 40%. If we go to look at that project, you can see some of the issues already. So we can look for a requirements TXT, which is what, um, Python would use, and then the package.json, which Node is using. So they've got all of these technologies combined into one project. And I feel um, that this could have been simplified somehow. <clears throat> now, you also have a, what I'm calling an impedance mismatch, which is if your code's running in the front end and you've got a back end, they need to communicate. And this is normally done with a REST API. And what I've often seen, you, you can make this more formal. So you could have a, uh, like using uh, open API specifications, you could generate code for the back end and generate code for the front end. And you have a contract then between the two, but this is not always what happens. Often I'll see the back end guys just create some JSON and then the front end guys have to sort of somehow link that in. So the way that I see it is we've, we've seen from the Sentry project that actually there's more, there's a lot of code getting written for the front end. And we've got this duplication of different technologies and the mixture of all technologies. So is that a better way? And I think there is. So if you're building a front end in React, you're probably using TypeScript. And I would argue actually that you could have done the whole project in TypeScript. So rather than having people creating a backend in a completely different language, why not use TypeScript through the whole project? So you, you, you just have one package manager and you have one programming language. And also there's another thing, which is um, React projects are not kind of built in this sort of front end talking to an API server, talking to the database. That's not the way that they work anymore. With, with modern React, you can build the React components so they're generated on the server side. They have direct access to APIs, to the database. And then you can select which of the components would be deployed to the front end. 
And if those components need to speak to service in the back end, the kind of the API is auto magically generated for you. <clears throat> so what this means is if the decision in the beginning had been to go completely with TypeScript and React, you would actually get a much simpler architecture for, for that application. So what's the conclusion now? Well, I think using like something like Next.js, a pure TypeScript React uh, application framework would be a better solution for a lot of projects. Or if you really, really want to stay with your native language, whether that's Python or, or Java, then you should be thinking about, okay, generating all of the back, uh, the front, the, the user interface on the server side. And perhaps when you need, if you do need interactivity, just add in on a little bit of JavaScript at that point. Okay, I hope that clears up the issue. If you've got any feedback for me, it's, I'm always grateful for it. And you can put that in the comments. And I've got some more videos like this coming up. And if you want to see those, then hit the subscribe button. Thanks very much.